Hello and welcome to the first episode of a series known as the Species of the Week. Now, and this plant that you're looking at today is known as the mother of thousands plants. is also known as the alligator plant, the devil's backbone, and the scientific name is called Kalanchoe delgramenlana. It is a small, single-stem succulent shrub that. Rarely or perhaps never grows over six foot of height. In terms of the ecology, it is actually a highly adaptive, succulent, drought-tolerant shrub that、um, has a fast growth rate, and it also reproduces really quickly. So it is a pioneer species in the ecosystem. Its ecological niche or character is similar to that of grasses, ferns, and daisies. This species of plant, or any plant in the same genus, is characterized by the feature of having the ability to grow new small saplings at the edge of its leaves, and those saplings would eventually grow their own roots and eventually fall down to the soil around it and form its new plant. This phenomenon usually happens after the plant reaches maturity, and is particularly common when. Um, it encounters high rainfall. Well, this feature helps them to reproduce asexually quickly, and it also helps them to colonize a new area quickly. Another less common but more regular way that they reproduce is to use flowers that they grow at the ends of the stems, and they're often elevated on top of long stalks. And the flower also weeps down and faces the ground. Much like that of the arbutus tree or the manzanita shrub. So, where this plant is actually native to, it actually came from a small region in southwestern Madagascar, and it naturally grows on dry savannas, semi-arid shrublands, or subtropical and tropical highland regions. The mother of thousands plant is often being confused with the mother of millions plant. Which you can see in this photo, and because of their similar place of origin and similar growth habits, the main or the biggest difference is that in the mother of millions plant, the young saplings only grow at the ends of its leaves. Well, for the mother of thousands plant, the young saplings can grow all along the edge of its leaves. Because of this adaptation, so the mother of thousands plant is actually adapted to growing in extremely dense or tight formations, and they are also really tolerant of the poor, shitty soils. So the major downside of this plant is that because of their tight growth habit, they would often get engaged in extremely intense interspecific competitions. They often have to compete for the access of water and sunlight. So, what are the uses of this plant? This plant is often being planted as an ornamental plant, usually outdoor areas in the more warmer parts of the world, such as Florida and Italy, and usually as an indoor house plant in colder plots parts of the world, such as Scotland and Germany. People chose to plant this plant is because they are drought tolerant. Like all other plants in the same stone crop family, they have the ability to store their own water inside their leaves and stems. This plant is also highly resistant to the parasites and most herbivorous animals because they the liquid that they store is actually toxic to humans and most other large mammals. People actually have to be really careful about this plant when they are growing it, because it can potentially poison the pets such as dogs, cats, and guinea pigs, and it's also really dangerous to young children, because it can be propagated using the saplings that they produce along their leaves. This plant actually is e- really easy to grow. And they used to be really popular among gardeners worldwide. So nowadays, this plant is often highly associated with the horticultural or agricultural or ecological atrocity of invasive species. 
due to the fact that they can reproduce asexually quickly, and they can also grow quickly once enough sufficient sunlight is exposed. On the other hand, this plant is also hugely tolerant of things like harsh climate, pollution, and a serious lack of soil. So once they're introduced to a new ecosystem, for example, in the North Hemisphere, they would uh, easily outcompete the native vegetation and greatly reduce their numbers in the long run. And also, this plant is actually toxic to various types of herbivorous wildlife, such as deer, goats, and elephants. As a result, this species is being listed as a highly invasive species or a noxious weed in warm tropical or subtropical places worldwide. Due to their great tolerance and versatility, they can actually be found in various urban areas such as recently abandoned buildings, on rooftops of buildings, and they can grow alongside the railroads and paved roads. They can also be found in abundance in certain rural areas, such as abandoned fields. The specimen that you're looking at here is actually a plant that I've grown from a sapling that I took from my friend's house. It was only 2 to 3 inches tall 2 years ago, and but when I put it in a sunny spot to let it grow, so it is now um, a foot and a half in height. A fun fact about it is that besides it is a drought-tolerant plant that is native to relatively dry areas. Um, it would actually grow aerial roots, just like a banyan fig, when it is exposed to excessive amounts of rainfall or moisture. And this uh, fact or adaptation actually allows us to propagate it using cuttings. But am I recommending anyone to grow this plant like I did? No! The answer is that I don't recommend at all, because this plant can potentially become really dangerous and invasive to places outside of its natural habitat. Once again, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and you can learn from it. And if you like the content that we do on this channel, then please feel free to like and share this video.